Welcome back. Welcome back. This is session number three. And we're going to start with the check-in as usual. So do your check-in now. Now's your chance to talk about administrative things. Is there any announcement that you have to make? Do you know when your next meeting time is? Check that out now. And after we're going to talk about the agenda. Now time for announcements. Okay, agenda. Here's my agenda proposal. So my plan was to talk about the consent process. Last time we talked about how to get to a proposal and this time we're going to talk about how to make a decision on a proposal. You're going to have some time to reflect on what I tell you and then we're going to talk about aims and objections because those are important to understand if there are any objections in the consent process. You're going to work on your own policy and consent to it, ideally. You're going to have some time to ask questions and do your meeting evaluation. So, the normal setup. Now it's time for you to consent to your agenda or make changes that work for your group. Do that now. Talking about the consent process. This is going to be me talking for a few minutes now. It is important to understand that we use picture forming and generating proposals only if we start making policy from scratch. What happens more often later on is that you review policy that you already made and you make changes to it. In that case, you would do an evaluation of your policy once it's up for review and then you would go into the consent process once you've made your changes. And consent process is what we're going to be looking at now. I want you to have your decision-making sheet ready. And what we're going to do today is we're going to do this piece. Picture forming and proposal shaping is what we did last time. And this time we're only going to talk about this and later also about objections. The first step is to present the proposal. Take your time to do that. Don't skip any of that. Bring it in written form. Um, or, you know, have it in a document so everybody can see what it is and take some time to actually read it. The next is the clarifying questions round. That is the chance for people to ask questions. The right prompt for the clarifying questions round is, is there any information or clarification that you need so you understand the proposal? Or do you understand what the proposal says? We're not talking about what you think about it or what other things one could be doing. We're talking about, do you understand what this says? So if you want to model it and make sure that your group ends up on the right track, the right thing to say is, I understand the proposal as it is, or I have a question. So that's the clarifying questions round. Everybody gets a chance to ask the questions. Once that is complete, you're going to do a quick reaction round. A quick reaction round is an open space for people to speak and be heard about what they think about something. And it can really be very different things what they do. They can talk about how they feel about something. They could be excited about something or relieved that finally there's policy about something. Or they could say, well, this is not my preference, but I'm willing to try it. They could also already say that they will have an objection about something and then we'll just listen to that and follow the process because we will get to that. This is also the place for appreciations. If somebody has put in a lot of work into that policy um, proposal, then now is a good time to say, hey, thank you for writing this up. It looks really good. Quick reaction round is also the place for amendments if it's small amendments, small changes that we can do right away. If we make bigger changes stemming from an objection, we change the proposal so much that we might actually jump back to presenting the proposal. Maybe you've been in a group before where you changed the proposal and then after a while you made so many changes that you're losing track of what the proposal now actually says. In that case, to be safe, jump back to presenting the proposal. After everybody has spoken, it's time for the consent round. The quick reaction round is really quick. That's why it says quick reaction round. 
And we don't want to be tempted to go into round after round after round, because then we are very likely to talk about preferences and other ideas and go on to all kinds of tangents. The consent round is what you should be pushing for, because in the consent round you will actually hear what works for people and what doesn't. So make sure you make it to the consent round. In the consent round, there are exactly two options. I consent and I object. There is no standing aside in consent decision making. Why isn't that? Well, because if you consider a situation where a group is making a decision, but one of them says, well, I guess I'm going to step aside here. It's just very likely that if something doesn't work, they will be the ones to say, well, I told you so. That is toxic energy for a group. We want the group as a group to move forward. And we can only do that if everybody can consent to the version that there is. If there are objections in the consent round, say, okay, thank you. And go to the next person until your consent round is complete. And then it's time to go into objections. We're going to talk about objections and what they are later. First, I want you to digest what I've now already talked about. So I suggest that you do a little reaction round to what I just said about the three steps of presenting the proposal, qu clarifying questions and quick reaction round. So do that now. So what is an objection? How do we know what is a valid objection, what isn't? So here's the definition of what an objection is in sociocracy. An objection is when you have a concern that a proposal might be in conflict with the circle's aim. That means we have to talk about aims now. So let's put the objections on hold and let's talk about aims. Aims are what the circle is actually doing, their actual work. So for instance, that could be growing food for the community or managing the community building or building houses for and with the homeless, or publishing a magazine for students of Amherst High School. It could also be running a bakery in Oregon. That is the aim of the organization, and it breaks down into sub-aims. Making pastry, or selling a product. The aim is very specific. Everybody should understand what you're actually doing. So the test for me is if when you're at a party and somebody asks you, so what do you do? You would answer giving them the aim. Oh, I make pastry. I'm a baker. Or um, I'm part of a committee that manages membership of our community. That makes sense. That is understandable. If you're at a party and you say, oh, I changed the world or I end homelessness, people would go, yeah, okay, that sounds great. But what do we actually do? So the aim is what we actually do. The why and what the bigger picture of it all is, that is the vision. I would like to focus on aims here because that's what we need for our objections. Once you know what your circle is actually doing, what the aim is, and you should have that defined somewhere, then an objection means if we now consent to this policy, I'm concerned that I won't be able to do my work to carry out the aim that we have as a circle. An objection might be, if now we invite after-school programs into our community building, then other circles won't be able to meet there anymore, at least not at the same time. So inviting after-school programs into your building would be in conflict with what you're already doing. In that case, that would be a valid objection. If we would only make a decision if we all agree on what is the best idea. We would only be working with overlaps of different people's personal preferences. And that overlap might not be very big. That would not give us a lot of room to move. So instead, in consent decision-making, what we use in sociocracy, we work with the range of tolerance. So this is now everything that I can work with. It's maybe not my preference, but it's something that I can work with. For instance, if other groups meet till 5 p.m. in our community building, having after-school classes there that only come after 5 p.m., that works. 
there is no conflict. It's maybe not what I wanted because really I don't see why we would be doing this, but I guess it works. So it's in here. What I cannot work with is this. This crosses the line and now I actually have a conflict with my actual work, so with the circle's aim. You can think of it in other ways. For instance, a good example that is used pretty often is um, if I talk about food, this is organic food, organic and vegetarian. This is just vegetarian but not organic and I might be okay with that as long as it's vegetarian. Well, this is meat. So I'm willing to accept something that is not organic but I might not be willing to accept eating meat. That for me is where I object. So this is what we refer to as the range of tolerance and it's a very helpful term for you to have because somebody might be saying, this is not my preference, but it's in my range of tolerance. And one quick comment, often consent is being translated to I can live with it. We actually like the phrase I can work with it a little better because it brings you closer to thinking about what the aim is. I can live with it also brings in all your preferences, all your values and so on. I can work with it is very action oriented, which typically helps group to make a decision. Can you do your work if we decide and consent to this piece of policy now? And you can see how this just widens our options. We now have more options to work with because the overlap between um, those ranges of tolerances between other people will be bigger than just the preferences. What you need now is you need to know what your options are. If there is an objection, what do you do now? And our decision-making sheet here has some very good options here. The idea being that we will only resort to some kind of power over behavior if we don't have options. This gives you a lot of options. So when there is an objection, everybody in the room can relax because we have something we can do now. We're not stuck. We have something we can do. And this is what this is for. The first step is always seek understanding. How do you think is this in conflict with the aim? Are you sure this is an objection and not just a personal preference? And be kind and gentle when you ask that. But that is a good question to ask. Help people understand their own concerns and try to find the right category for it by talking about it and actually really trying to understand what it is for them that raises to that level of concern. Very often what people want is they want their concern to be heard and taken seriously by just having a round on everybody speaking to their concern and sort of relating to it, that will already help a circle member who has raised an objection. And the person might just say, you know what, I really felt heard here. I really think you understand what I'm talking about, but I'm willing to let go of it and try it. The other option is to amend the proposal. We might just make a change. So we could change it from Thursday to Friday. We could change it from 5 p.m. to 4 p.m. We could change any content that there is in our policy. And we can also change the term. For instance, if we decided to try something for a year, we might now try it only for six months. Every policy in sociocracy always has a due date, a term end, that will force us to review the policy so we won't get stuck in our ways. And you can make those terms very short. If something doesn't seem safe to somebody and they have a concern that something might happen, they might be willing to say, okay, I'm really not convinced here, but I guess if we did it for three months and we revisited it then, I wouldn't feel confident enough to say yes to this. And that's the place where you want to go. One thing that often goes hand in hand with shortening the term is to measure the concern. So if your concern is noise and that the other groups in your community building might be bothered by the after school program, how can you find out if that's actually true? And one way of doing it would be to survey those, those other groups. And you could commit to checking in with them every week to find out if anything changes. 
You could also measure noise in some other way. You can count the number of complaints. You can count the number of clicks on your website. There's many things you can count. And also another piece of feedback is money. Do we have more sales now? Do we have more donors now? Have our donations increased? That is good feedback to understand whether something is working. Another way of dealing with an objection is to refer to a different circle. Typically, the decision would still live in your circle. So what you're only doing is you're getting input from a different circle. So you could be referring to the next broader circle to get some input. You could also refer to a helping circle. A helping circle is basically a ad hoc group. So instead of the whole circle dealing with something, send two or three people, get some outside expertise into that helping circle. Anything you can do so your group can make a next step and can get the information that you need. You don't want to get stuck as a circle, so always think about what you can do so next time you're in a better position to actually work towards a decision. You can also just refer to the author, especially if it's simply something that needs some more work and you don't want to be dealing with it in the large circle. Send it back to the author. The author ideally has heard all the input and will then work it in and you can start again. I'm sure you have questions about objections and how to handle them. So now gather your questions that you have about objections. Great. Now I think you're ready to consent to your own proposal about how to evaluate your circle. I want you to go through all the steps, present the proposal, ask for clarifying questions, do quick reactions, quick reactions, and then go into the consent process. If there are any objections, deal with the objection. In general, whenever there are objections or whenever your circle is stuck, do a round on what to do. Maybe somebody in the group has an idea or somebody, you know, has a beginning of an idea and then it can build from there. Trust group wisdom and give it some space to build. There's really good things that can come from around on what, what could we do now? All right, so you're going through all your consent process. Do that now and come back when you have consent on your policy. We're done for today. Now it's time for your meeting evaluation. Share with the others and write it down. What went well, what could have been improved. Make sure that feedback gets to me and I'll see you in session number four. Bye-bye.